three-dimensional painted slides that appear on the stage and start moving around and it's, it's amazing. Like the slides move and they go further and further and further back into the space. So you just are kind of met with these different uh, You Google puppetry in Japan, you only find out about bunraku and you have no idea about other forms of uh, Japanese puppetry. So it's very difficult to know anything about uh, Kawakuri Ningyo, Hakamawashi, but if you go to Japan, suddenly these things are like very popular and everyone is participating in them. But in the United States, like nobody knows they exist. So I was really excited and interested in this idea that there's this whole world that we have no idea exists, but when we go to another country and we sort of get off of the internet and we begin to explore things um, in smaller communities, uh, there's a lot of culture and art that is extremely uh, popular and exciting and really vibrant. And the lecture is about my time working and studying in Japan under a fellowship from Julie Taymor, and that was looking at traditional forms of Japanese theater and puppetry outside of the canon of like bunraku. So I was really interested in finding rare and unusual forms of puppetry in Japan that a lot of people in the West had no idea existed. I create two-dimensional puppet spectacles and I travel around the United States and I perform them and I uh, build miniature dioramas. I send cameras inside of them and then they live project to the audience. And in puppet school, we only looked at bunraku. And then I started talking to uh, Japanese puppeteers who were sort of maybe living in Japan through UNAMA, which is the sort of the international uh, puppet association. And these Japanese uh, puppeteers talked about other forms that I had no idea existed. Like even though I went to puppet school, I read about puppets, I just never heard of these types of, of performance, like Kalakuri Ningyo or Fusuma Kalakuri or uh, Kimishibai, like all this stuff I never heard about until I started having these conversations. I think I want them to change sort of like ideas and stereotypes about Japanese puppets. Like I think a lot of people just think about Bunraku and they think of like maybe things that are very like well rehearsed and pristine and um, kind of like high art. But what I found is that in fact a lot of the puppetry in Japan is extremely kind of like wild and exciting and a lot of young people are participating in it and it's multi-generational and that's a whole facet that um, we don't see when we just look at it from the perspective of Bunraku. Because even though you're dealing with just visual images, he would be very specific about what visual images would follow what visual images. So despite the fact that there's not necessarily language, um, there's still a script.